Hey, what's up everyone? Sam here. Experiments in science happen all the time. Usually they're pretty boring, so most of us don't really care for them. However, the whole mad scientist stereotype may actually have some truth behind it. In this list, I'll be showing you five of the strangest science experiments. I'd like to give a big shout out to viewers Nicknacks and Ben Alsop for suggesting this video. Number 5. Elephants on Acid In 1962, a group of Oklahoma City researchers decided to find out what would happen if an elephant was on LSD. Warren Thomas, the director of the city zoo, decided to find out, so he basically shot an elephant with 297 milligrams of LSD. Now, 297 milligrams of LSD is a huge amount. It's about 3,000 times the typical dose a human being would take. In fact, it's still the largest dose ever given to a living creature. The elephant named Tusco reacted pretty badly. At first he just stomped around and then he fell over onto his side. The researchers were of course pretty concerned so they rushed over to try and aid the elephant. Unfortunately Tusco died there and then. So the conclusion of the research was that elephants react really badly to LSD and it's really toxic for them. However, years of debates continued and people claimed that maybe it wasn't the LSD that killed him but actually the drugs administered to the elephant when they tried to revive him. So Ronald Siegel of UCLA decided to redo the experiment. He got two elephants, one was given LSD, the other was given the same drugs used to try to revive Tusco. Now he didn't shoot the elephants with the drugs, instead he just mixed the drugs into their drinking water. The end result was completely different to the first experiment. Both elephants were completely healthy. At first they did feel a bit strange and felt a bit sick as to be expected but after a few hours they were completely normal. So the debate is still open however it's a pretty pointless experiment and really should never ever be repeated again. Number 4. Two-Headed Dogs this is a very sick experiment. In 1954, Vladimir Demikov shocked the world when he showed them a two-headed dog. Now this dog wasn't the result of a weird genetic mutation. In fact, what he actually did was basically stitch a puppy's head onto a mature German Shepherd. It is completely sick. What's even more disturbing is that he kept the head alive by pumping blood through it. So there was a live puppy literally being stitched on to another dog. People were absolutely shocked when they saw both heads drinking milk and they were even more shocked when they saw that the milk was dribbling out of its unconnected stump. The Soviet Union, however, completely boasted about the experiment, claiming that their medical technology was so much more superior to the rest of the world because they could perform this monstrosity. The fact of the matter is, this wasn't a medical breakthrough. It's more like just a very cruel, long extended, extreme type of torture. Number 3. Vomit Drinking Doctor During the early 19th century, Stubbin Firth, a doctor from Philadelphia, went a bit too far to prove a theory. His theory was that yellow fever was a direct result of the heat of summer and couldn't be caught during winter. So what did he do to prove this theory? Well, he cut himself and poured the fresh vomit of a yellow fever patient onto his wound. Amazingly, he didn't catch it. But he wasn't done just yet. Next he dribbled some of the vomit into his eyes. He then cooked the vomit and inhaled the fumes. He fashioned some of it into a pill and then swallowed the pill. And lastly he took a whole glass of fresh undiluted black vomit and drank it all. Amazingly he didn't catch it so he proved to the world that his theory was correct. However, as it turns out, just drinking the vomit wouldn't make you sick. It needs to be transmitted directly into your bloodstream via something like a mosquito. So essentially, he did all that disgusting stuff for nothing. Number 2. Facial Expressions in 1924, Carney Landis, a psychology student of the University of Minnesota, decided to set up a little experiment. The purpose of his experiment was to find out if certain emotions display similar facial expressions in different people. Sounds perfectly fine. He subjected his test subjects to a range of different things, such as smelling ammonia, looking at porn and touching slimy frogs. But it's the last part that gets pretty sadistic. He placed a white rat in front of them on the 
table, gave them a knife and asked them to decapitate it. At first, all of them pretty much refused, but he insisted and kept insisting and eventually two thirds of them agreed to do it. And for the ones he didn't, he forced them to watch as he decapitated the rats himself. The end result turned out that people do display a wide variety of different facial expressions for different emotions, something he probably could have figured out without having to chop off the heads of rats. Number 1. The Stanford Prison Experiment Philip Zimbardo was curious to find out why prisons are such violent places. Is it just the nature of the people in prison or is it actually the environment of the prison itself? It's a very good question. So one day he decided to build his own prison, get a bunch of volunteers in and essentially lock them up. Now these volunteers were non-violent people. They never had a criminal record and never even been arrested. Now he split these volunteers into two groups. One group will be the prisoners and the other groups will play the guards. Now you'd probably expect since these people are non-violent that they'd all get along nicely. However, the truth is pretty interesting. Within the first night, the prisoners staged a revolt and the guards were of course felt very threatened. So what do they do? They started handing out punishments. They started withdrawing food, doing strip searches, verbal abuse and all that kind of nasty stuff. Within the first 36 hours, one prisoner already cracked and wanted to leave the experiment. Other prisoners were showing some deep signs of stress, emotional and physical. The experiment was cut short because everything was becoming uncontrollable and Philip Zimbardo even had to actually call in the real police at one point. When the experiment eventually came to an end, the prisoners were relieved, as you can imagine. However, the prison guards were not so happy. They actually enjoyed having power over other people. So the end result and the end conclusion to the experiment is that having one group of people grant power over another group of people is a recipe to violence and unsocial behavior. Thank you all for watching and if you did enjoy this video and have any comments, feedback or suggestions please do leave them in the comments below. You may also have noticed that I've changed the upload schedule from daily to every other day. So every two days you basically get a new video. Unfortunately I had to do this due to other commitments that have popped up into my personal life. However if I ever have more time and I can start doing daily uploads you bet I will be back on to daily uploads. Once again thank you all for watching and if you liked it please do give it a big thumbs up it does help me out loads and until next time feed your mind.